Welcome back to the Darting Through the Faith podcast. I'm Father Sean Wilson. With me is Julia Monin today, believe it or not. Believe so, it or not, yeah. I'm here again. Here you Why are. Why do I keep coming back? That's a great question. Um, I don't know. I thought I thought one of these times you'd probably just have enough yeah. and not come back. Right. But hmm. but you keep coming back, so hmm. I'm grateful for that. Yes. I said this to you guys a couple weeks ago. It's the funnest thing I do all week. Well. <laughs> that can be one of two things. I live an incredibly boring life, or I have a lot of fun being here. And the answer is both is true. <laughs> it's a little bit of both in well, the reality. <clears throat> I don't know what to say to well, that. I'm anyway. honored. I'm flattered. And um, I'm worried for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Again, a little bit of truth in all of yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's well, true. Yeah, it, it is. How was your Thanksgiving? It was great. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Mm-hmm. So got to spend time with uh, family and friends for for dinner on Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So my parents came up oh, yeah. from Georgia. So shout out to mom and dad. Again. Mom's been getting a lot of shout outs, <laughs> but dad too. Right. Um, yeah, they drove up the 500 miles from Georgia, spent a few days here, and uh, we did a whole lot of nothing. That's yeah. Awesome. So it was like, well, what'd you guys do? Right. Well, Friday we took the recycling into town. <laughs> that was uh, that was the right. Well, that mm-hmm. and mass was the time I left the left uh-huh. the rectory, sure. so that was good. That's a good day. It was. It was. That's a good day. Mm. Friday, I took the recycling away. That's good, man. Yeah. Good. How about you? How was your Thanksgiving? Uh, it was good. Yeah. Thanksgiving with the family. I spent some time with my mom and sisters over the weekend, um, doing a little shopping and just some bonding. That's always nice to get to have conversations mm-hmm. with them. Yeah, you know, we we see each other a lot, but it's normally at like kids parties and things and sure you, Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, so you don't get to actually have a conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, do you know? <laughs> anyway, well, it's accurate. I've observed enough, <clears throat> mm-hmm. and that's just the way. Like when there's a lot of like little kids mm-hmm. running around. I mean, the mm-hmm. most in depth conversations is like, what are your kids up to? And sure, you know how who's yeah. who's learned how to you know, whatever, tie their own shoes mm-hmm. and all that. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So it's, I actually, I think I kind of get yeah. what you're saying. Right. So that's, yeah, I didn't mean that. And i sorry. That came across <laughs> kind of mean, didn't it? No, no. Do you know? Yeah. Because I don't think you do. Well, <laughs> no, I would, okay. just, it's safe to assume that I don't <laughs> as one who's celibate and has no sisters. Right. Shout out to my two sister-in-laws. Love you. <laughs> Whole family of shout outs. Anyway, it was very nice. Spend some time with them and have good conversations. And we even got talking about the cardinal virtues really? at lunch. So that was a fun conversation. Hot dog. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We won't, I won't talk about where, where the conversation went, but let's just say a lot of us are ignorant of, including myself. Sure. I'm not saying them. Just a lot of us are ignorant to things that our children learn in CCD. We'll oh. just leave it at that. Okay. And also just one more thing. Sure. The cardinal virtues, for those of you that may not know, are not virtues that cardinals need before they become cardinals. Oh, you know, how about that? It seems like a name, like the, like a right. cardinal virtue. It seems like that might be it, but mm-hmm. it's not. You want some trivia time as to where, why they're called cardinal virtues? Yeah, do it, man. So the word in Latin for cardo, mm-hmm. cardinal, that, that mm-hmm. word is the word for hinge. So uh, the cardinal virtues are the hinges of our lives, and the cardinals are the ones who the election of the pope hinges upon. That's good. Hinge, yeah. I should have just called you at lunch. Can you please explain this to us? Because Google was letting me down. Well. <laughs> so anyway, that's good. Yeah, right. that's good that's stuff. Awesome. And then the cardinal <clears throat> birds, mm-hmm. when people came to the United States, they said, hey, those cardinals were the same color as the cardinals in Rome. Let's call them cardinals. Right? So the birds were named after the church people. Really? Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. I did not know that. Well, now wow. you do. Now you do. Yeah. And then the San Francisco baseball team, the Cardinals were named after the bird, named after the named after the, the church people, named after the hinges. Right. Right? Wow. Baseball to hinges. Fun facts. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. So here's here's the underlying thing. Do not be ashamed if you do not know these things about your faith. Uh, yeah. But also, don't let that stop you from learning. Right. What these things are. Or asking questions. Yeah. Actually, speaking of something like that, so for the bulletin this Sunday, you know, I write a little article every Sunday. Mm-hmm. I realized in talking to people that people don't know the precepts of the church, Accurate. right? So there are five things that every Catholic, like baseline, mm-hmm. what you have to do to be a practicing Catholic. Mm-hmm. So so we just talked about that, like mm-hmm. very basic. Yeah. Um, but things like, oh, so it's obligatory to go to mass on Sunday right. or to go to confession once a year or right. to receive Holy Communion once a year. Right. Yeah. Good. So, That's good. Because yeah. you know what else got brought up at lunch what? on this Friday? 
as we were sitting down to dine. Oh, yeah. Or penance, you know. Penance. And on Fridays and, and yeah, the precept of not eating meat or something. Sure. Some similar penance to do that. So we had really good conversations. Well, get this. <clears throat> so... Uh, as we were talking on Friday after after um, Lent, you know, mm-hmm. Father Jedediah, the other priest is there. Father yeah. Jared stopped by mm-hmm. and my parents, and we're talking about what we're going to have for dinner. So the story came that in some point in his life, Pope Pius XII gave the church in the United States an indult to eat meat on the Friday after Thanksgiving. Have you already heard this story? I, Father Jedediah was just telling yeah, me this. Yeah, yeah. So um, so basically, when in those day and age, every Friday was a Friday where you had to fast for meat. Mm-hmm. And so the, the story uh, that was communicated was that, well, Pope Pius XII gave all the American church basically for leftover Thanksgiving mm-hmm. to do that. Mm-hmm. So we tried to find it. Mm-hmm. Father Jedediah tried to find it because he's a good researcher. Mm-hmm. Turns out, urban legend mm. didn't actually happen but um but the church in her mercy gives all catholics the option to do another suitable penance on fridays mm-hmm. so you can have your turkey you just you know you just got to flog yourself a little bit for yourself or you know don't drink coffee mm-hmm. mm, that's yeah. harder for this this one than sure. not eating meat but yeah Flog yourself is good too. Flog yourself's good too. <laughs> Flog each other. That's what we decided to do. <laughs> you did yeah. not. Yeah, I called not. dibs on Father Jared. Just really, uh, <clears throat> you know. None of. The, I feel. I feel. That's like, not true. I feel like this should be assumed that this isn't true, but I should just say it. This yeah. is not true. This yeah. is us joking. Yeah. In case you're listening and you can't see us smiling and looking at each other sarcastically. Right. right. So okay. Wow. Wow. We haven't even got into the meat. Of our ah! podcast today, I went ahead and slowed that down and yeah. emphasized that so it wouldn't be missed. You you all noticed, good. Yeah, yeah you did and we really already well. I'm so proud of got you. into some depths there. Yeah, that's awesome. But before before we do, I do need to make an official okay. shout out. Okay, okay, official. So I was talking to a friend from high school mm-hmm. um, who lives now in Cincinnati, mm-hmm. Kyle Warmuth, and he told me he listens to the podcast. So unbelievable! Shout out, Kyle. <laughs> I had it. Yeah, unbelievable's right. <laughs> Um, I had his wedding a little over five years ago. We were talking about, he just had a second child named Leo. Shout out to Leo. Nice. Probably doesn't listen. If he does, <laughs> he's not picking things up. Um, but anyway, so my friend Kyle mm-hmm. is actually starting a, like a Catholic themed run. Mm-hmm. So the word incarnate running festival Something like that. I don't know. You wrote it down. I did. The word incarnate running something. Anyways, Bible. it'll be May 21st, 2022. But it's a 33-kilometer run to represent the 33 years that Christ was alive. Wow. There's also a 3.3-mile run, and I think there's a shorter, something else with 33, like kids run. Mm, so like he 0.33? Could be. Half a mile? Yeah. I might be able to walk that one. You might. You might not, though. <laughs> That's accurate too. So that anyways, it's great to hear people doing good stuff for the Lord, especially ones that, I mean, Kyle and I have known each other since like fifth grade. Mm-hmm. So played basketball together, I think on the fifth grade basketball team. And that's where we first met. So <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah. We were just wee little tots. Wee little tots. Yeah. And now he's taking those skills. Yeah. For and the he's glory still running, of God. Obviously. Which, he's organizing you know, a run. He's still running. That's true. Are you going to run in this run? No, I don't run. I I yeah. just physically can't do that. Yeah. So. Right. I choose not to. I mean, <laughs> I bet it, uh, maybe I could if I tried long enough. Nah. No. I couldn't. You know, there's a point in your life where you realize like, yeah, that's not going to be me and it's never going to be me. Right. You know, like right. it's like there are times when I was even young, like I'm not terribly old, but the, you mm-hmm. look back and you're like, you know what? Maybe I'll do that someday. Sure. And you get to a point and you're like, that's great for other people, that, but that will never right. be me. Right. And, you know. I accept it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So anyway, okay. Well, I will support this Word that's Incarnate right. Run. Right. Look it up. They have a website. Prayer. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah, that's good. Okay. May, you said next May. Yeah, May 21st, which is actually will be the six-year anniversary of my priestly ordination. Yeah, I knew so, that was a special day. Yeah. Okay, that's so. awesome. Wow. Cool. Okay, well, shout out Kyle. I believe family. everybody's going to be running in honor of me. You know, it seems logical, right? The whole world revolves around me. It's like the humble. Yeah. The humble thought. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's exactly what's happening. (laughs) I wish I hadn't said that. (laughs) Anyways, let's pray. In the name of the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we entrust this time into your hands. We thank you for our ability to worship you, for our ability to praise you 
in heart and in body. And we ask that you may send forth your Holy Spirit upon us to guide us as we entrust this podcast into the hands of the Blessed Virgin Mary and to the intercession of St. John Paul II, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, so we are talking about today posture, Mm -hmm. kneeling, sitting, standing. That's right. Posture during the mass. During posture the during mass, right. And you think, how mo- how long can the podcast be about we kneel, we sit, and we stand? How much do we really need to know about the reality that we kneel, we sit, and we stand at mass? The answer is, if you read Pope Benedict, <laughs> so yeah. Pope Benedict's book, The Spirit of the Liturgy, written, I think, in 2000, mm-hmm. brilliant. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole thing, like, I, I think I've read it twice, and it's just... It's rather marked up, mm-hmm. and it's good. And actually, I the times I've read it, I, I marked it up in two different colors so that I could look at the, which ones were black and which ones were blue. Yeah. That's so nerdy. That's like, like something I would do. Whoa. I do do that. Oh, man. <laughs> well, that was a good insight, Pope Benedict. <laughs> Touched was... me spiritually. I don't know why I'm mocking that, but... Ah, you're mocking yourself and I your nerdiness myself. of coordinating your notes you write in books, which those who know me and yeah. have tried to decipher... My notes in my books. Well, no, I do that exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why we were matching glasses, Julia. That's a code. There's a code. So anyway, you think how much can can you do? And then sure. Father Sean sends me this reading, and I get through like the first two pages. And I'm like, this is way more than we can cover in one podcast. The even if even if we just did kneeling. Oh yeah. The depths of why we kneel. The uh, the, the biblical, biblical basis of yeah. why we kneel. Of what what is actually its meaning when we kneel. It's powerful stuff. And then to even think, uh, because at our parishes here, it's always been something we've done, right? We always kneel. So to think about the the objections to that, and he discusses that too in this writing mm-hmm. of um, the objections to that and why perhaps some got away from that at some point. And anyway, he discusses that too. So to think about that reality, whew, there's a lot there. There is. And one of the beautiful things about reading Pope Benedict is he'll like he'll bring up objections to the point that he wants to make and he'll actually describe them better than people who believe them, mm. like people who hold them. So he'll build up this argument mm-hmm. as and it like really well done. And what is happening? Yes. I, did you guys all know this was coming? I did not. I did not, but what is that? We can't just like ignore him for the next 50 minutes. Why I've been it? doing that for 15 years. <laughs> you guys are not going to believe what just happened in this studio. We, we just had, a sp- we had, a, we had an advent, an arrival. We had an arrival, <laughs> a surprise arrival. I was not prepared. I am not either. And I don't know what to do about this except get up on my seat and let him take my spot. But oh. for sure, for sure. Okay. You don't have to take my spot, but at least make an appearance and, and you don't have to take your birthday cap off. You could have kept it on. He's saying he had to take his birthday cap off. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Father Jared Cohn is yes. in the studio. He's gotten so many shout outs that he's actually what? here. I didn't know he was here. He was coming. So come on, Father Jared. Come on. At least wave at the camera. Hi, Father Jared. Is he in? Is he in the shot? You're getting official thumbs up from our producers back there that you are in the. <laughs> Say something. The people are longing to hear your voice. Right. Hello. <laughs> That's all I got. That's all he's got. Hello. Well. He just has a hello. It is as we're recording this. Today yeah. is his birthday. Right. Yeah. So happy birthday. Um, Thank you. We're wow. spoiled by his presence. That's unbelievable. Wow. What you guys did my. Was what is happening? At first, I saw a presence in the, and I'm like, who just wandered up here? And I saw you see him, and I thought, what could be there? <gasps> <laughs> wow. Wow. I believe he did get a shout out earlier, too, in this episode. We were multiple. Yeah, mm-hmm. multiple, Gray said. Wow. Wow. The Lord, when he provides, I'm he speechless. provides. I, I don't even know where to go with that. All right. Well, are you going to join us the rest of this time we talk? Because we're really just getting started. He's. <laughs> You know what his face said there? I know better than yeah. that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have you know, time I, I sent him a text earlier yeah. and I didn't get a response. Mm. And that was a bit peculiar. Right. I don't know if that was because he was coming here and he didn't, mm. you know, but he so wanted his response to be in person. Away. I yeah. also sent him a text earlier and never got a response. Mm. <laughs> yes to both of us. <laughs> You're welcome. Wow. I, can we I, go on? We can. I, I mean, guess. like, I'm just asking, like, is it going to be physically oh, possible for us to go on? Not without the grace of God. Hmm. He's He says he's well, going to wait. We got grace out. here. We just need God. <laughs> 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 
on that note, he's out. Yeah. And I'm, 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 you know what? I've changed my mind about this too. No. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Wow. What See you, Father Jared. His birthday, and he's treating wow. us. Wow. I know. That's unbelievable. Gosh. That's my word of the, this episode, apparently. Unbelievable. unbelievable. Yeah. Wow. So why do we kneel at Mass? Well, so he, well, first he builds up, so uh-huh. Pope, he being Pope Benedict, sure. not Father Jared Cohn, <laughs> although he would probably agree, about just the people says it doesn't have said Mm -hmm. it doesn't suit our culture to kneel or it's not right for a grown man. He should face God on his feet or it's a, it's not appropriate for a redeemed man. He has already been set free by Christ and doesn't need to kneel anymore. So basically this, like it's part of our maturity to face God, you know, as uh, kneeling our standing. And then he even, um, he even makes the point as some people have said, like, this is part of what it means to be, uh, kneel are to stand is to be renewed, to be, to be new, to, mm-hmm. to be fully mature in Christ. And that's why we should, we should stand. I can, I can on some level understand yeah. that argument. I've even, I've even heard it said, you know, and I find this incredibly beautiful that we we're you know, we're this fallen nature. And so it's like we are and have been on our knees and the Lord Je- Jesus comes into humanity to save us and redeem us. And it's like, he comes down to meet us where we're at, comes down in mm-hmm. our humanity and he lifts us up and says, through my death, through my suffering, let us now see one another eye to eye. And there's right. beauty in that and, and um, truth in that. Um, so anyway, like you said, that's how Pope, or, yeah, that's how, what Pope Emeritus, but yeah. was he Pope at this time when he wrote this? No, he was Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Well, circle gets a square, bringing us full circle with Cardinals. I know. Well, he was, you know, oh right. my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I know that seems like an eternity ago that we talked about that. I know. That. This is this <laughs> but a long that was one. still today. If, he, if you're still with us, we'll get there. Um, but he even makes the mm-hmm. point when he talks about standing as standing as the posture of the victor, right? Like right, Christ right, stands right. in victory. And and there's even a little bit of this um, written into the into the sacred liturgy. So normally when our during a um, an ordination, there's the the candidates lie down prostrate mm-hmm. before the altar to to offer themselves to the Lord, and the whole congregation kneels. Um, to 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 chant the litany of the saints, right? To ask for the saints' intercession, except during Easter time. In Easter time, if there's an ordination during the litany of the saints, everybody stays standing as the posture of the victor. So there's a sense that okay, there is something there is something about standing versus mm-hmm. kneeling. Mm-hmm. Um, however, 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 there is a however, yeah, to this, right? Um. So he goes on to talk about St. Augustine, again, agreed with with this argument in a certain Mm -hmm. aspect, but then St. Augustine goes on to say that the humility of Christ and his love, which went as far as the cross, have freed us from these powers, meaning the powers of like the false gods and like, right, right, this idea of kneeling to the false gods. We now kneel before that humility. The kneeling of Christians is not a form of enculturation into existing customs. It's quite the opposite, an expression of Christian culture, which transforms the existing culture through a new and deeper knowledge and experience of God. He goes on to say that kneeling doesn't come from any culture, right? It comes from the Bible. Right. Because you think about that, like there's no part of our culture that we kneel, mm-hmm. right? Like if if we come in the presence of the president of the United States, we don't kneel before him. Mm-hmm. We, you know, if somebody comes in the room, right, everybody stands up, right? Mm-hmm. That's the sign. That's the sign of honor that we give to somebody. Is we stand instead of sit. Mm-hmm. So it's purely comes from the revelation of God mm-hmm. to kneel, mm-hmm. and that's that's the point he's making. It's very biblical, and especially in the book of Revelation, everybody's kneeling and dropping to a knee in the book of Revelation. Which, which he mentions that in the New Testament, um, where this is mentioned about kneeling, right? The, it occurs 59 times in the New Testament, 24 of which are in the book of Revelation. The heavenly liturgy. The book of the heavenly liturgy. Right. Which is presented to the church as the standard for her own liturgy. Mm-hmm. That right there should give you pause and make you go, hold on, what does he mean by that? And if you're asking yourself that, good question. Go find the answer. <laughs> you could read if if you're really curious yeah. about why the Book of Revelation is mm-hmm. the standard for the church's liturgy. Mm-hmm. There's a great book by Scott yeah. Hahn called The Lamb's Supper. Mm-hmm. So yeah, read that. Read that. It might blow your mind. No, it's very good. Might might not. Mm-hmm. Chances are it probably will. Yep. <laughs> but he even distinguishes the multiple ways that that kneeling or something similar is in the New Testament. So there's just straight 
kneeling. Mm -hmm. Um, There's kind of falling to your knees. So we hear that oftentimes in the Bible, you fall to your knees. And then there's also prostration. So laying kind of face down before the almighty God. Mm -hmm. Um, So all three of those, and he kind of like dives and weaves his way through the biblical basis of all of those. So with all that being said, here's the the heart of it at least mm-hmm. for me in my own spiritual sure. life so because again he starts out with this argument of why perhaps some people might say you know we're beyond this kneeling we've we've come beyond that this is the standing is this posture of victory christ has is the victor so we stand with him all that which which, which we've already talked about but when we go to luke's gospel and luke it, in a special way benedict writes is the theologian of kneeling prayer mm. he tells us that jesus prayed on his knees So this prayer, the prayer by which Jesus enters into his passion, is an example for us both as a gesture and in his content. So this is the agony in the garden, Mm -hmm. right? So we're putting ourselves there. The gesture Jesus assumes, as it were, the fall of man, lets himself fall into man's fallenness, prays to the Father out of the lowest depths of human dereliction. Am I saying that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, in anguish. He lays his will in the will of the Father's, not my will, but yours be done. He lays the human will in the divine. He takes up all the hesitation of the human will and endures it. It is this very conforming of the human will to the divine that is the heart of redemption. For the fall of man depends on the contradiction of wills, on the opposition of the human will to the divine, which the tempter leads man to think is the condition of his freedom. Okay, there's a lot there, but the reality is, is that Luke in his gospel, again, as Benedict says, the theologian of this kneeling prayer points to Christ. What is Christ doing in this mm-hmm. moment where he himself is offering himself to God the Father, fall, kneeling in our humanity, taking it upon himself, our brokenness, our, our weakness, and what where, what's his posture in all right. of that? One of on his knees, one of surrender on his knees, and not my will, but your will be done. And it's 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 kind of getting at like, recognizing our humanity, right? Our lowliness before the all powerful, the almighty mm-hmm. God. That it's this it's this act of humility of saying, okay, I can't do this on my own. Like I can't stand and fight. Like when you're on your knees, you're rather vulnerable, right? You're not going to be able to defend yourself, but you're simply at the mercy of God. And mm. that's really what humanity is, right? Simply at the mercy. So it's this total surrender, surrender to the Lord. And uh and that's what Jesus mm-hmm. that's what Jesus is doing, right? He's wrapping his own will around the will of God. Wow. Okay. That really, that gets my wheels turning again, stirs my heart, that the beauty of that. And um, when we, what, what you said exactly like that, when we are on our knees, we are in a position <clears throat> where we can't fight, where we are right. surrendering. And he even, he takes that on in a personal reflection, which I thought was really beautiful mm-hmm. about the prostration at mass. Mm-hmm. And he was talking about, right. especially at his Episcopal ordination, when Pope Benedict was ordained in, in a bishop, he was the Archbishop of Munich before he went to the Vatican, and just his own incapacity for the task that's being asked mm-hmm. of him. And basically laying it all to the Lord to say, one person cannot do this. Mm-hmm. It is far too much to expect to give this responsibility. It simply has to be you. And gosh, how often is that our prayer? You mm-hmm. know, when we have whatever's going on in our lives and we just, the right attitude is to kneel mm-hmm. and to say, Lord, I, I can't do this on my own. Mm-hmm. Right? And and the Lord, we need we need that. It's mm-hmm. not so that we can feel like we're, we're worthless or we're incapable of doing it, but mm-hmm. that actually our whole lives depend on the Lord. Amen. And kneeling in prostration meets that the interior surrender finds bodily form in kneeling in prostration. So that's beautifully said. So when I was reading this, this this my mind went to scripture in uh, Luke 14, 7 through 11. This is the parable where Jesus, well, let me just read it. It's short and I don't butcher it. He told a parable to those who had been invited, noticing how they were choosing the places of honor at the table. When you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not recline at table in the place of honor. A more distinguished guest than you may arrive, may have been invited by him, and the host who invited both of you may approach you and say, give your place to this man, and then you would proceed with embarrassment to take the lowest place. Rather, when you are invited, go and take the lowest place, so that when the host comes to you, he may say, my friend, move up to a higher position. Then you will enjoy the esteem of your companions at the table. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. 
So my mind went there and thinking about kneeling and it, this being this act of humility, mm-hmm. right? So interiorly, we we are humble ourselves enough to know everything is depending upon God. This this act of we're surrendering ourselves to Him and to His will be done, and then we drop to our knees. And the reality is, is that in it, through Christ the Victor, He can raise us up, right, to mm-hmm. this higher place of honor. But how? Um, embarrassing as christ points out if you put yourself there and think oh i'm good yeah. only to be knocked back down and say get back down <laughs> right so right there we have it playing out in that parable that christ gives us to to take the lower place mm-hmm. to put yourself there by default and let him be the one to raise you up right i was just thinking on like a, a personal level it's actually one of the the parts of that i get jealous of everybody else at mass like I almost never kneel during mass, mm. right? Like it, it's kind of awkward and a little disconcerting. It's like I'm standing here and everybody else is kneeling. Um, I guess mm. this is this is where the Lord calls me, but that's not particularly where naturally you're thinking I should I should probably be kneeling here. It'd be real awkward if I celebrated mass from my knees. You just see this little head above the altar. Mm. Um, but it feels like that's the right way. And luckily written into the church's rubrics is after the elevation of the host that the priests... Um, makes a genuflection of adoration, it mm-hmm. says. So, um, so we get a little bit, but mm-hmm. and even you know going so far as to receive Holy Communion on our knees, mm-hmm. right? Like that. That's uh, I don't know. It's something you wish you could do. It's it. Of course, the Lord takes care mm-hmm. of you, and you know you go where you're where you're called. But um, mm-hmm. but that's um, I don't know. Just something. It's like all right, Lord. I guess this isn't who you're calling me to. How you're calling me to receive you right now. So that is something to think about too. And. Just two, and the priestly call to to act in the person of Christ in persona mm-hmm. Christi, to and Christ, literally stand in the person of Christ. literally right, yeah. and and that is like He is the victor, and you are standing in His place, and yeah, so that makes mm-hmm. a lot of sense. Sure, okay, all right. It also makes sense when in your own humanity and your own struggle, where, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. you yeah. kind of wrestle with that, sure. And what maybe one of the other parts about here that I just thought was was great was he he um, he connects like this um maybe like two like a unnecessary separation of bodily and spiritual mm-hmm. right if it's all just about kneeling then it just becomes some empty act and uh but if it's all if it's just all interior worship and it has no connection to our body then then we we've we've dissociated from the incarnation you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um so he says when kneeling becomes merely external, a merely physical act, it becomes meaningless. On the other hand, when someone tries to take worship back into the purely spiritual realm and refuses to give it embodied form, the act of worship evaporates, for what is purely spiritual is inappropriate to the nature of man. Worship is one of the fundamental acts that affect the whole man. That is why bending the knees before the presence of the living God is something we cannot abandon. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. And then he points to Stephen, mm-hmm. right? Stephen kneeling. And even, and he connects it later in the standing and he sees Christ standing. Like Christ is standing as the victor. Stephen is kneeling as one offering prayers on behalf of everybody else, but also one surrendering his will to the Lord. Mm-hmm. So first martyr to give up his blood for Christ, right? Does so from his knees. Does so from his knees. An imitation yeah. of Christ who did so for us in prayer mm-hmm. to the father in the garden. All right, so tough question time. Sure. Why has why have um, I mean, like I said, it's not something perhaps we experience in our four parishes, or to my knowledge that we've ever experienced in any of these parishes. Again, I could be wrong about that, but I've been in Catholic churches where kneeling is not the norm during communion and, mm-hmm. and elsewhere. So why is that, and what ought yeah. we do about that? Um, so yeah, during the Eucharistic prayer, mm-hmm. generally people kneel mm-hmm. at that point of the mass because the presence of God is, is coming before us in the, in the Eucharist. So the natural reaction, maybe the supernatural reaction, the reaction that people have when God's present throughout the scriptures is to kneel. Mm-hmm. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the, uh, that's the, that's what we're instructed to do. And I think it probably, you know, like that last thing that, uh, I kind of quoted from Pope Benedict about taking worship purely spiritual. And I think that was a theme to say, well, we worship with our hearts. And that, that led to so many different things. That's why there were no images in church too, right? Let's the, the physical part of our, the incarnation was basically severed. The, the, the flesh and blood and the spiritual 
was severed rather than being brought in together to be integrated just as Christ is true God and true man. I think, and this is just my own kind of like musings on the matter, is the physical and the spiritual were separated. And people could say, I, I'll worship with my heart. I don't need to see images. I don't need beauty. I don't need any of that. It just all comes from the heart. And similarly, well, my worship comes from my heart. I don't need to kneel. You know, like worship isn't something you do with your body. It's something you do with your heart, mm. which of course just has enough truth to say like, hmm, well, I guess maybe that's right. Mm-hmm. But it, the, it, we're integrated, right? We're body and spirit, that Jesus Christ is true God and true man. And so those things have to have to come together. And so I think there were there could have been an excess maybe in one direction where it's like, kneel because sister told you to or because sure. your parents told you to and the whole thing, it, it lost the heart, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and but the, the pendulum might have swung the other way, right? Mm-hmm. And from going just a purely spiritual or purely physical meaningless act, mm-hmm. say, well, this is when Catholics kneel. Okay. Like mm-hmm. nobody bothered to ask why. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, nobody, that's a great generalization. Sure. Probably not true. But so you, it, from something purely physical the pendulum swings to, well, we worship with our hearts, not with our bodies. And it's like, actually it's both. Mm-hmm. Right. And so, so that's my, that's my, hmm. and I'm sure other people would have other things to add as to why some churches did that and, mm-hmm. and the fads of the time. Mm-hmm. But that generally seems to be the, uh, my own take on it. Sure. So okay. I don't think people are generally like poorly intentioned. Right. Sure. But there is, it's not right. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and, and to, to end it with the example that Pope Benedict gives, mm-hmm. and he tells this story of the desert father. So those early Christians that go out to the desert to be alone with the Lord. So again, there's a story that comes from the saying of the desert father. So I'm quoting Pope Benedict, according to which the devil was compelled by God to show himself to a certain Abba Apollo. He looked black and ugly with frighteningly thin limbs, but most strikingly, he had no knees the inability to kneel is seen as the very essence of the diabolical. Mm -hmm. The devil won't kneel before God. The devil won't surrender to God. He has no knees. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lot to think about. It it does. When you think about the, the the fall and and the the fall from heaven and the, the sin of pride, like you think about the, the root of all sin and pride and you know, my will, not God's will be done. I mean, it makes sense on a logical Mm -hmm. level either, even, um, Benedict closes this section about kneeling up by saying, the man who learns to believe learns also to kneel. And a faith or a liturgy no longer familiar with kneeling would be sick at the core. Where it has been lost, kneeling must be rediscovered, so that in our prayer we remain in fellowship with the apostles and martyrs and fellowship with the whole cosmos, indeed in union with Jesus Christ himself. So where it has been lost, perhaps the Lord might call us to help rediscover it. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. Well, it was a lot on kneeling. We should probably hit st- sitting and standing. And he even he even he goes when he goes into this section. We can be considerably more brief in what we are to say about these two postures, referring to standing and sitting, because they are not very controversial these days, and the importance that each has is not hard to see. So he says, right. "All right, now the kneeling was the hard one. We're going right. to ease up a little bit with these other two. And the st- the standing. There's maybe like two two things I think points that he makes is standing as the posture of the victor, which we have, we've sure. already kind of discussed. Yeah. But then also standing is an expression of readiness. Mm-hmm. And I think about this, especially with the gospel, right? We, we sit during the, the, the Old Testament and then the, the reading from the letters, normally letters of St. Paul, but then we stand for the gospel, mm-hmm. which is kind of peculiar. But it's almost as if we're hearing it like those first people that are alongside Jesus and they're standing as, as the word of God, as Jesus Christ is moving among them. Mm-hmm. And it compels a choice. And... Mm-hmm. standing compels a choice. Like if you're sitting, you're like, no, oh, that's cool. I'll kind of think about that a little bit. Mm-hmm. But the standing, it says, okay, the Lord places a choice on us and mm-hmm. we can, we can choose him or mm-hmm. we can walk away sad like the rich young man, mm-hmm. but he, he gives us that choice. And so that, that kind of readiness that comes from standing mm-hmm. is, it's kind of cool. Yeah, that is. Yeah. So, yeah. So as we said, standing indicates this, this, uh, this victor, right? That, mm-hmm. that Christ has won the victory. And then, yes, this expression of readiness. Like there's an action. There's right. something we need to do. And um, even to yeah, think about, like, as we're singing the Lamb of God, we're standing at that point. 
because the Lamb has won victory, right? We don't kneel before then, but we kneel after then. So while we're singing, Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Mm. It's, we're standing to acknowledge that he's victorious over sin and death, mm. that the Lamb who was once slain has stood, has mm. rose from the dead. So mm. um, so yeah, we're acknowledging that Christ is victorious. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, and then, so you mentioned this when you were describing all of that. Sitting is one at the service of recollection, Mm. right? So our bodies should be relaxed so that our hearing and understanding are unimpeded. So you kind of touched on that when you said that. But yeah, so sitting, it incurs this easier easier for us to recollect, to actually take in, to receive what is being told. And I, I just noticed like in my own participation at mass, like it's easier to close your eyes and just kind of listen when mm-hmm. you're sitting rather than when you're standing. Because some, you know, when you're sitting, it's kind of, you're comfortable, you know, at least where your body is. Mm-hmm. If you're closing your eyes and standing, like you can bump mm-hmm. into stuff and you're a little bit more wobbly. So you kind of have to focus with your eyes a little bit more. Mm-hmm. So sitting seems to be a, a great time to to close your eyes and to just simply listen or to pray in the silence of your hearts, mm-hmm. whether that's as the readings are going on at the preparation of the altar or, um, or even before mass or even just like after mass, you want to mm-hmm. bask in the Lord's glory a little bit, mm-hmm. just kind of sit down and catch some rays. It was a sunbathing. S O N sun rays, sun rays. Uh-huh. Uh, I like it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> All right, there's just one last line. Sure. Because I think that he, he moves into like enculturation, talking about like um, like the lotus position, which I'm not familiar with, like Eastern meditative practices. Mm-hmm. But there was one line that I always find, like every time I read it, just you know which one I'm about ready to well, say, Well, I you? have a guess, but you go. Wherever applause breaks out in the liturgy because of some human achievement, <laughs> it is a sure sign that the essence of liturgy has totally disappeared and been replaced by a kind of religious entertainment. That's a mic drop moment right there. I, right? I, I, that's where I right? thought you were going to go. And how true is that? Yeah. Yeah. When, and I mean, think about it. Why are we at the whole, why are we at mass? What's actually happening at mass? Go back, think about everything we learned, mm-hmm. everything we've learned from the time we've been little people, everything we've learned this year in this podcast, everything you and father Jedediah have been teaching us throughout this year of the Eucharist. Think about what the mass actually is what we're actually entering into and then think about the reality of that when applause is happening. So not to like downgrade what, what the the choir was able to do, but we applaud, what are we actually applauding for? Right. Human achievement, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is not what the liturgy is about. Right. And uh, yeah, there's a, uh, there's all sorts of things that like people want to have, and maybe this is getting a little too far off, mm-hmm. but having an, an, a, uh, a mass for some human achievement, right? Mm-hmm. Like, well, this is all a bunch of football teams getting together, so let's have mass to, to celebrate us. Mm-hmm. Way to tick, you know? Like, <laughs> uh-huh. And even, you know, and to make sure, and there are things that we have a mass for, right? Mm-hmm. Like for the anniversary, you know, somebody's 50th wedding anniversary, mm-hmm. we have a mass not to celebrate the two couples, but to thank God for the fidelity that's been born. Because 50 years of marriage is no small thing, mm-hmm. right? And to be able to be faithful through all of that is an image of God's fidelity to us. Mm-hmm. So to remember any time there's a mass, it's directed towards the Lord. It can be to thank him for particular things or to, even to beg for certain things. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's a certain mass that you can offer um, for an end to storms, right? You're in the middle of a, of a terrible thing or even for an end to a drought, mm-hmm. right? So it always turns us to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um so, so if you get first place in Kyle Warmus running festival, right, <laughs> there will not be a mass to celebrate your victory. That's the most unbelievable thing that, that could and would ever happen. That's... Unless no one else signed up and I didn't have to actually run the entire I was time talking to, to the listeners. I wasn't talking oh. to you. <laughs> okay. Well, one of you could definitely win that. I believe <laughs> that's funny. I thought you were really just hitting me where it hurt there. So mm. that's shame on me for assuming the worst. Yeah. Father, I Sean. bet you thought this joke was about <laughs> you. <laughs> I did. Uh. All right. Well, I, I hate, I don't know that we're ending on a better note. Well, let's that. end, let's end on the biblical note. Okay. Right? Sure. And this, and he mentions like the center of kneeling from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, mm-hmm. um, talking about Jesus entering into humanity and, um, emptying himself as this image of kneeling. Oh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Can I close with prayer with that? Oh, sure. I just thought, let's leave, I'm going to leave them on a cliffhanger. Actually. Until we throw the dart. Let's throw the dart. And until we figure out where we're going next time. And while we do that, I'm also going to talk out loud as I look through my notes 
to figure out where I'm going in here. Philippians chapter 2, chapter 4, chapter 2. He's pointing at it. Thank you. With the Verse dart. Verse 6 through 11. Verse 6 through 11. Okay, got it. All right, it. where do you want to go on this dart board? Oh, I want to go somewhere great. <laughs> How is that for an answer? Ouchie. You got the monstrance. <laughs> Nope. I'm going to have to start looking to see if I can actually yeah. hit something. All right. Well, it's a good idea. Grace thinks that's a good idea that you start looking. Well, then I won't do it. Right. I, this is what I expected. Nope. Nothing. Oh, there we go. Six times a charm. You know what they say. That's a good one. Marriage in the Eucharist. Marriage in the Eucharist. Next oh, time. Next darting time. through the faith. So we're not actually talking about like the sacrament of marriage and how you do it at mass, right? Yeah, we're going to talk about like the connection between marriage and the Eucharist, right? I'm so excited. Okay, I'm so excited. Okay. What? What did you say? I was going to say that you just can't hide it, but then I didn't. Okay. But then I did. <laughs> sorry, I made you. Sorry, I pulled that out of you. That's yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. Okay. So ending with scripture here. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.